Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the next Warlord Wednesday video. Um, this is a kind of a continuation from last week's one, where last week I showed you all the figures of my army and all the stuff that's coming up. Uh, this week is kind of a step-by-step -step guide of the process I do for painting my Americans. So, um, what I'll do is I'll do like a, a little quick snippet of a video saying what my thought process is and a couple of pictures of what it looks like. And I'll go through a little step-by-step -step guide. It's not a like a full-on painting guide, so it probably won't teach you how to paint. Uh, but it gives you a general idea of what I use. And it's for my American army. It's only going to be five troopers and then, of course, general pattern. Uh, and I also want to remind you guys... Now we're still running the competition, still going to go for two weeks. So if you want to enter and win a £25 voucher from Nirvana Gaming, uh, follow the link below on this video or on last week's video and go to their, web, their Facebook page and stick a picture below of anything you've painted, anything from Warlord Games. So it can be from Gates and Torres, Project Z, anything like that. And then I'll pick the winner of the most interesting photo or the, most, um, the photo I like the best. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the best painted. Um, there's a couple of photos up there already, so I encourage you guys to go check it out and uh, stick a photo down and uh, let's get to the table and show you what I'm doing. So this is stage two done. Uh, I've put together the five infantrymen. I went for a little bit of a um, sort of a squad with the kneeling down, sort of taking cover behind maybe some barricades or some walls and stuff. So I've got five normal GIs with rifles and now I move on to the undercoating and sanding. Uh, so, yeah, see you back in a bit. So this is phase two, as you can see, they've been sprayed, I sprayed them brown. Uh, mainly because, with the colour scheme that I've done before, you can see they've got brown fatigue pants, the brown on the rifles, brown on the inside vest, so it kind of makes sense to spray them brown, and of course, that helps with the basing as well. I also sprayed up General Patton, just because I wanted to get him done, um, but he'll have a different type of base, I think. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with his base yet, so, well, I'll just leave the base for now. But I've got the guy sprayed, got the rifle sprayed, so now it's on to the painting. All right, be back in the next step. Okay, so this is the next phase. As you can see, I've done the base colors. Uh, just giving it a second to dry, so while I'm doing that, I thought I'd get a quick chat with you guys. Um, this is just before the pre-wash, so I'll add the wash to this. And then, um, once it's dry, go to the highlights. So as you can see, just added some of the khakis, the greens, the brown I've left as the brown spray coat. So yeah, pretty much that. Pattern I did a little bit different. Obviously he's got the green black jacket on. And I've added, instead of his webbing being green, I added black just to make him stand out a bit more. Although as a leader you probably don't want to be standing out in the crowd. But hey, it's, uh, it's models. So uh, this is on to the next phase. Right, so the wash is on now. Now I'll let these guys dry. Just a quick note. I used uh, Reichland Flesh Wash for the skin. And I used brown or Agrax Earthshade for most of the, the brown parts and webbing. And then I added just a little bit of um, camo shade um, for the green bits. Um, that's pretty much it. So it's going to dry now and then we'll come back to that in a little while when it's dry and I can do the highlights and finish off the basing and that squad will be done including possibly general pattern. So in the meantime while I'm doing that I'm going to carry on with some nobblers. Alright, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so this is the next step done. I've added color to the miniatures. Um, they still need some finer details like eyes, um, insignia on the shoulders, and of course the basing needs to be completed. But I thought I'd show you what they look like at this point. Uh, the basic colors I was using um, to highlight them was Monster Brown, and um, for the khakis, like the, uh, the leggings and the shirts, uh, Deck Tan, and then I've added some green skin to uh, what is this? Dark green for the green helmets and stuff. 
just to give it a little more depth and warmth and also in case I want to highlight anything like um, a little bits just to make it stand out a bit more I use the ivory color so that's pretty much what it's got down to nice and quick and clean uh, once everything was done I then gave it a glaze um, of Agrax earth shades thinned down with the Lamia medium just to give it that dirtier look because obviously uh, they're not straight off the boat I want them to look like they've been you know in the in the fight for a little while so that's the stage they had now uh, general pattern the only difference between him and the rest of them is that I've given his belt buckles, his belts and stuff like that, a darker, like a grayish black, as opposed to the green webbing that the rest of the soldiers have got, just to make him stand out, like I said before. So there we go. That's this face. Now onto the next phase, which will we'll finish off the basing, put on the insignias, and do the eyes and finer details, and then they are done. Okay, so this is the final step. Um, they're all done, based, final details added, and they are ready to join the rest of the army. Uh, just a note about the insignia. I've got this um, sort of black circle with the yellow cross in it. And there's a couple of reasons why I chose that. One, it was the easiest thing to paint as an insignia. <laughs> and two, the very first models and army I ever painted, um, which a few years ago was an Empire Army for Warhammer 6 edition. And I painted them in the yellow and black color scheme, which is the Avalon color scheme. And uh, ever since then, I've, I've always had a fondness for the yellow and black color scheme. So I've been adding them systematically into every game system I play. And uh, obviously this is bolt action, so I went with this. This is the 33rd Infantry. Um, I, I had a quick look on um, Wikipedia for some insignia when I was looking for what I was going to do them. And uh, they weren't very prominent in World War II. They were more prominent in the Korean War. Um, but... They were there. They were more in the specific Pacific as well. So that's that. Um, for basing, um, it's just a similar way I went with the others. I like the the different flocks and um, flowers and things like that. And I've gone for a, a softer undertone on the top of the base. So the lighter sand and rocks and things like that. And then the flowers to give it some color and, and um, texture. And then of course I haven't done... Um, general patterns base yet because I haven't thought of what I'm going to do but I've done the insignia on his coat and his three stars so that's pretty much it um, that is a step-by-step -step guide of how I paint my figures they're not going to win any game you know, painting competitions but they look great on the tabletop and they're pretty quick um, I mean I, I obviously only done five in general pattern but I can by the next Wednesday I'll have another five done and uh, that'll be a full squad Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I hope that it helped. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. And uh, I'll stick some more pictures up. And enjoy your Warlord Wednesday.